Well, hi there, Internet. My name is Court, and you've got Courtside Seats for my review of the first season of The Mandalorian. Let's do it. So John Favreau and Dave Filoni, who I believe is the showrunner on Clone Wars and maybe Rebels, they conceived of this show that's about a bounty hunter who looks a lot like Boba Fett, but isn't Boba Fett. It takes place, I think, five or six years after Return of the Jedi. And I gotta say, I really dig this show. I'm not gonna be doing a play-by-play -play of the entire season. I'm just gonna talk about the things that really stood out to me and certain things that maybe didn't work. Now, if you didn't see it in the title, this is a spoiler filled video for the entire season. So if you haven't finished the show yet, you haven't watched the finale yet, maybe go away, watch it, and I hope you come back and check it out later. I am a fan of Pedro Pascal between Game of Thrones, a little uh, science fiction movie called Prospect. If you've never seen that, check it out, it's really cool. And he was in that uh, Ben Affleck Netflix movie, uh, Triple Frontier, he was really good in that. I really like this dude. He imbues Mando with like a gravitas, which is a cheesy word, but it's true. He's got great physicality when it's actually him in the suit, more on that in a second. And I love that despite being a warrior, he tends to be really kind of soft-spoken, only speaks when he needs to. I like that about him. I also respect the show for having the stones to not remove Mando's mask until the finale. You know, like, when you have a bankable star and a good looking one at that, the studio usually wants to show off that face. But it was so much more impactful because they waited until the finale. And then when we do see him, he's not looking all heroic and handsome. He's looking sweaty and gross and beat up. I thought that was great. But now about the stunt double. So he's got a stunt double. The guy's name is Brendan Wayne. And I think it's really cool because this guy is the grandson of John Wayne. And this is totally like a Western in space. Just a nice sort of synchronicity, you know? The show's had a number of guest stars, including Gina Carano, who's playing Cara Dune. I really like this character. Gina Carano's not like an amazing actress, but I think she's actually pretty good on the show. We have the voice of Tycho Waititi as IG-11. In a couple of episodes, we've got the voice of Nick Nolte as Quill, Giancarlo Esposito, Bill Burr, Natalie Tina, also from uh, Game of Thrones, Clancy Brown, Mark Boone Jr., Carl Weathers, and the voice of Werner Herzog, who, I mean, it's one of the best voices ever. And I like all these people. I will say Carl Weathers as much as I love the dude. I'm up and down on him in this show. He's got some really good moments and some moments where it's like, not great. And I'm mixed on the visual effects. Some of it, particularly like the starships, those look great. Some of the creatures look really good. Some not so much. I think they're called the Blurgs in the first or second episode. Those looked a little weird to me. A couple scenes with the stormtroopers riding on the speeder bike, something looked a little off. But like I said, the starships are cool. The scenery is cool. The dog fights, the droids, all that looks really good. And I like that this show is going hard with puppets as well. Quill's a puppet and Baby Yoda's a puppet. We'll be talking about Baby Yoda. I like that. I like the, the mixing of visual effects and special effects. That's great. And I really dig the score by Ludwig Göransson. It's got a really heroic theme, but I also really dig the more electronic elements that feel really at home in this sort of techie world. It's good stuff and it gets into your head. But yeah, can we talk about Baby Yoda for a second? This is the cutest thing ever. I like Ewoks, I like Porgs, I'm not made of stone, but Baby Yoda, come on now. I'm fascinated by this character, not just because he or she is incredibly adorable, which he or she is, but the fact that the character wields so much power and then gets all like tuckered out and falls asleep after using it, I think that's hilarious. My only issue with Baby Yoda, which again is a puppet, when people pick him or her up, when people pick up Baby Yoda, Something looks weird. It looks like it's not lifelike. It looks like the head's moving and the rest of the body's just like a box. That's kind of strange, but it's really not a big deal. And there was a moment in the finale where I really thought they were going to name drop whatever species, this baby and Yoda and Yaddle or whatever. I thought they were gonna name drop the species. They didn't. Kind of glad they didn't. I kind of feel like that's better left to be ambiguous. I enjoyed the pilot episode right away, except for that fish guy who was played by Horatio Sands. That character felt so out of place, like he was written by a different writer or something. And somebody else pointed this out. I don't remember who it was, but I think they were bang on the money. They were saying that character was a Star Trek character. I was like, Totally. And that's not a bad thing. There's nothing wrong with Star Trek, but it doesn't fit in Star Wars. I loved episode three, the sin with Mando, really kind of finally recognizing his affection for the kid. And then all the Mandalorians coming to help him get away. That was great. And I'm blanking on the name of the woman who directed that episode, but she's going to be doing all episodes of Obi-Wan and I'm down. I really dug episode five, I think it was five, which was The Prisoner. It was actually a very funny episode. It had a great little ensemble cast, kind of felt like a heist movie. And Mando was pulling some Batman and that's always a good thing. I know episode four, Sanctuary, a lot of people really didn't like it. It's actually one of my favorites. It introduced the character of Cara Dune, who I really like. It had a badass ATST, which was kind of treated like a T-Rex, which is cool, because 
Bryce Dallas Howard, who was in Jurassic World, directed that episode. That was awesome. And it gave us a lot of character development for Mando himself, and also tempting him with like settling down with a family life. I thought that was really interesting and like really humanizing. Plus, a lot of really cute Baby Yoda stuff in that episode. And my least favorite was episode four, The Gunslinger. It kind of felt completely pointless. Like you didn't need it there at all. It didn't advance the story. It was just a side mission. And it also had that cliffhanger where Ming-Na Wen's character gets found by that other person who I'm assuming is Moff Gideon, Giancarlo Esposito, but they never got back to that. They just sort of dropped it as a cliffhanger and never got back to it. Maybe next season they will. I assume they will, but still. I love the final two episodes, particularly the finale, Redemption, which was directed by Taika Waititi and you can totally tell. Like it's not a goofy episode, but there is humor in there and it's, it's in his distinct humorous voice. The cold open with the two stormtroopers just having a conversation, I thought was hilarious. It felt like a two-man vaudeville show. I loved it. I also loved that IG-11 is now a nurse droid. That was great. And that shot of him slinging Baby Yoda onto his back while he's going into the melee, guns blazing. That was awesome. And he goes out in a very Terminator 2 kind of way, which was not as emotional as I was expecting it to be, but I still really liked it. And then you get the money shot of Giancarlo Esposito with the Darksaber. I don't know a whole lot about Darksabers. I know a little bit, but it was really cool. But yeah, overall, I really enjoyed this first season of The Mandalorian. I dig that Mando's sort of new mission is to get Baby Yoda back to his homeworld. I think that's a really good jumping off point for season two, which as I understand is filming now and will be dropping on Disney Plus in fall of 2020. I am looking forward to it. Now, I don't have a proprietary rating system as of yet, so I'm just trying to figure out what I'm gonna give The Mandalorian season one. And I think I'm gonna give The Mandalorian season one a... I will kill your infant Yoda. Out of 10. So now I wanna know, have you seen Mandalorian season one? If you haven't, why are you watching this? What did you think about it? Who's your favorite character on the show that isn't the Mandalorian? Because I gotta challenge you a little bit. Whatever your thoughts, hit the comments below. Let's discuss. If you enjoyed this review, please smash that like button and give a share if you really enjoyed it. And hey, why not take a second, do me a favor, click subscribe and ring that bell to subscribe to my channel for more movie reviews, entertainment news, trailer reactions, all that good stuff. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. I have spoken.